Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of all that happened in England over the Christmas period. Um, just <laughs> to let you know, uh, because of the sound, I had just recorded a 20 minute video on already doing all that. And then I realized that I didn't turn off the noise cancel and the uh, sound is so off that I need to redo it. However, the battery of my phone is so drained, it is powers the microphone that I need to do it this way. Maybe it will be another 20 minute video, but just ahead of that. Well, um, to get to it, uh, we're gonna run through all of the uh, notable games in a way. But I have to say, first of it, all is falling city's way. And it was really, uh, at first you thought, yeah, maybe they could stumble and uh, Chelsea's gonna get back on track. But then uh, City get a dirty win at Brentford, where Chelsea only makes a, a draw against Brighton and we're probably lucky to even get the draw. And Liverpool losing to Leicester. And then uh, City probably really was challenged for, for real for the first time against Arsenal, but Arsenal implode. While Liverpool and Chelsea just manage a draw. And so it all points towards Manchester City. Every single round went into their favor. They at least could keep up, if not better, the results of their uh, opponents. And so kind of the focus now shifts on the battle for this fourth spot, because one would think that Chelsea and Liverpool will probably hang on to second and third place. Although, you know, maybe, maybe not. Africa FCON is coming. There might be some uh, changes, but over, overall, I have a feeling it might uh, that they might stay in there. And now it's only who will end up in the Champions League. And then the other uh, development is that your proper it will be one of the two North London teams with Arsenal looking pretty sublime. But I think uh, Spurs are finding now a grit and the work ethic is also pretty impressive. West Ham teetering away, Manchester United really looking off at the moment and uh, let me just say a few words before we get into in, in the game on them uh rangnick i don't know whether it, i uh, i wanted to watch united and uh, every single time i didn't manage to uh for one reason or another uh i have to say from what i feel it's either the players not buying into rangnick's uh revolution although one has to give that time because it's a radical change of what they have been doing before uh, before so i will not actually put it now only on the, on the coach with the exception maybe that you know uh some of the players really either are not adept for that system or just um don't buy into it but i also have a feeling that the squad looks uh, physically not very fit in many many ways so um, that's at least what I can tell from the outset without having seen too much but I thought I'd share my few thoughts again I would think if it's really only down to the coach and the switch of the system that you need to give the system time because there uh, it relies a lot of um, you know that uh, there's some automation and so on that you know you don't have to think you just do uh, it all needs to fall into place and you know it doesn't help even if United didn't play for a long time if uh, many squad members are in fact uh, in quarantine and have to play from a distance that doesn't get the machine going but yeah that's all i can say uh also before we go into games quickly on i think the big talking point always around the christmas break is of course that the uh, german coaches and you know now also brendan rogers and so uh, among others are complaining about the cramped fixture list and i definitely can see their concern um i think it is always hard when you're a foreigner and you come and criticize traditions of uh, the country where you're in. And I think this uh, automatically gives you some opposition from the get-go. I do think they have valid points. I think playing three rounds in the space of less than a week is madness, especially the turnaround from Boxing Day then to the 28th. I mean, this is two days. This is just crazy, absolutely crazy. And in especially in a time when the uh players are anyway over exhausted and don't give me that with a squad depth because you know everyone is tired and their injuries uh it is a hard burden to bear i do understand why it is that way because this was instated at a time when you know uh workers were off 
and you could get the biggest crowds of the year during that period. So, of course, gate receipts were important. Now, it stayed on because now at the moment, the only league that is playing, Italy tried it, I think, two or three years ago, but the only league that is playing is England. So you get or anyone or any soccer fan will automatically go and watch the Premier League. Me included. I mean, I, uh, some of the fixtures were really, really nice that I would, I would have watched anyway. It is even so far that at the moment, you know, I actually thought I'm not going to talk too much. About, uh, gonna, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to actually watch some more traditional sports, but uh, there's no skiing uh, or very little skiing. Not something that really inter interests me um, around this time. And the ski jumping at the moment, the Austrian team is so bad that uh, it's not as, as much fun, although I'm a huge fan of ski jumping. Um, so those stores are traditional sports around here but I found myself watching soccer and I was mostly rewarded now I still think that the round around the 2028th this one I think you should put somewhere else um, I actually would say normally a match day is anyway stretched over four days Friday Saturday Sunday uh, and Monday you could do the same thing here take the one from Boxing Day you can keep fixtures you know you can have the slots lined up but you don't need to have any parallel fixtures and then stretch it, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th. Then the New Year's fixtures, you can have the 30th, you can play a fixture if you like, and then uh, play on the 1st, 2nd, 3rd. There you have a stretch right. You can even play on the 3rd, the 1st. Maybe it's not an uh, attractive fixture, but I think you can fill the calendar with games every day, and you get your TV revenue, you get your attention the same way. And actually the players get a little bit of a rest over the holiday period. That would be my fix there. Okay, rant over. No, it was not the rant. It was just an opinion piece in a way. I would say uh, let's go through those three rounds. It was not complete rounds. And yeah, uh, the interesting part is now the Premier League. It should have been after boxing day that 50% of the matches are played. Now it is. Because there were, uh, again, uh, many um, uh, matches cancelled due to COVID. Um, it started off with a bang with Manchester City over Leicester, where Manchester City was brilliant for 20, 20, 20 minutes. Got, got a four-goal lead uh, at that time. If I would have watched the game, I was visiting family, so I couldn't. Uh, I would have turned off that game, um, probably. But Leicester came back in the second half and within 20, 20, 20, 20 minutes brought it to a 4-3. However, a few minutes later, Laporte then uh, sets the uh, score straight and in the end it's a 6-3. Really, really impressive. And there were more goals in the other grounds because Arsenal 5-0 over Norwich and Spurs helped by a red card by Zav, uh, to Wilfred Zav. Absolutely idiotic red card, I have to say. Um, uh, win 3 0 over Crystal Palace at that time they were already 2 0 up uh, and that was probably the most impressive win by Spurs I am wearing Spurs because statistically they are the biggest winner together with Wolves uh, City and Leicester over this Christmas they have had the biggest delta in expected points um, I did see uh, Chelsea win at Aston Villa uh, a game that was yeah not the greatest to be honest um, a freak on goal gave uh, Villa the lead and a penalty on Jorginho that I think no one can really uh, arg arg with. That, 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 that the game was even, but then as Lukaku comes on more him a little bit later, uh, the game turns around and he f scores the go-ahead head goal with a uh, typical header and then bulldozes himself to the penalty box where it's brought down late, late on at a time where Chelsea probably should have put the game already to bed. Uh, and then it's a penalty and again Jorginho scores. At that point, you really thought that Chelsea got the turnaround because, you know, they were a little bit sliding. Um, something that did not happen for Manchester United, who uh, a dreary 1-1 one, one, uh, Newcastle United. Newcastle, the uh, team that seems to be, to be that they're going down. Then, uh, the fixtures of round 20. I mean... Uh, a little bit uh, surprised to, to, to me was that Spurs only got a 1-1 one, one at Southampton. Uh, Southampton actually outplayed them until they got a red card. Um, and then uh, Spurs only could manage an equalizer. I think it was a Kane penalty. Had three goals disallowed, one of which was an armpit offside. So um, while I think overall maybe the um, draw was the just result, um, I think if I was a Spurs fan, I would feel a little bit aggrieved over that. The big one, of course, was Leicester's win over Liverpool. If they play that game again and again and again and again, this is the one time that Leicester will win with one shot on goal. Liverpool not playing great, playing actually rather slow, slow, but creating enough chances to win that game. They managed to lose it. Uh, chief of this was a penalty uh, where Salah, 
I don't know how he decided to take the shot. I mean, it was a good save by Schmeichel, but if you're in the Raya, Raya right corner, it's exactly at the height where the goalkeeper is actually uh, flying to. Uh, and then uh, the, the rebound onto the crossbar. Yeah, it was a weird scene. Um, as I said, Liverpool created many chances. I mean, the biggest one was definitely Mane missing an absolute sitter early in the second half. And then just a few minutes later, Adam Ola Lukland again with the only shot on goal scores the winner for Leicester. And then when Liverpool missed another chance, I thought, yeah, Liverpool's going to lose that game. And there go the title chances for Liverpool in many, many ways. Um, and on the next day, it's again the separation between uh, Manchester City and the rest. City not playing great, but getting a 1-0 at Brentford. Um, thanks to a brilliant Foden goal. Foden and Grealish did not play against Leicester, by, 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 by the way, because they uh, went out when they shouldn't. So yeah, shows the depth of the squad for City. Uh, that is, I think, the big thing. So they get the win. However, Chelsea also have not a great game. Uh, actually looking rather bad. Lukaku giving them the go-ahead goal. But Brighton actually being really well and having many, many chances are playing Chelsea for most of the time. And when I thought that Chelsea had weathered the storm, I, you know, I really wanted Chelsea to get there, that at the win to keep the title race at least a little bit interesting. And then they concede the goal, and it was totally deserved by Welbeck. Uh, so yeah, I couldn't. It's not where you could go. Ah, Chelsea threw it away. No, this was one of those those games where actually Chelsea would have deserved to lose. To be honest. So yeah, uh, not looking good. And yeah, more on Chelsea in just a sec. Uh, Manchester United don't get a win for a change, but it was only Burnley, and Burnley is one of those those teams that uh, had a not only bad period, but they look in true trouble. And yes. I already said it. Uh, over the New Year's break, then the big news story that, 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 that broke is the Lukaku interview where I said, oh, Diamo Impa, in, in, in time coming back, I want to play there, I didn't want to go to Chelsea, blah, 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 and the coach is not playing me because the system doesn't, blah, 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 blah. Uh, of course, Lukaku uh, turned out to be then benched for uh for uh, the game against Liverpool which we'll talk about in, in in a sec but just a quick thought on that whole thing I wouldn't put too much in it yes he didn't say the right things but don't we all want to hear footballers for once speaking their mind and I'm pretty sure since it was an Italian interview he wanted to charm uh the interview and you know it was to be played in Italy and you know I think he was playing more to the audience than really having a serious talk but you know whatever it is it speaks of where Chelsea are at. Now, uh, I think the best game of the uh, of the entire period, not, not the most exciting, but the best game, were Arsenal against Manchester City, which was the first New, New Year's game. A game, I hate New Year's Day, because you always feel hung, hungover, because you get out of your room, you stay up late, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so yeah, um, <laughs> this was more like in a haste than I was watching it, but I really enjoyed watching that one. Uh, for 20 to for 20, 20 minutes, Arsenal kind of looked at it a little bit. City had uh, typically more control, but then Arsenal kicked in another gear and Pro should have scored more than the one goal through Bukayo Saka. Uh, they were absolutely brilliant. This was the first time I really thought that Manchester City have been given a challenge uh, this year, a proper challenge. And I think the halftime break came at the wrong time for Arsenal because then you can you have to overthink a little bit. And yeah, in a five minute period, it all imploded for Arsenal. First of all, Shaka gave up a stupid penalty uh, that went to VAR. And I think the big problem was not necessarily the penalty call, which although at the moment I thought it's a little bit soft, I can definitely see because their shirt pull, although Bernardo Silva is already flying, the shirt pull is the one thing that there is no way there's no penalty given. Uh, there, although I really think that other than that, Shaka really wanted to step out of it and not block Bernardo Silva. How about that short pull? If he does it, okay. The problem is that Elson bef uh, before that uh, brought down Odegaard and this didn't even go to VAR, where you really have to say, yeah, maybe this should have been a penalty. Then Gabriel is roughing out the penalty spot, gets a yellow card. That is the second boneheaded decision there. Uh, the penalty is, of course, converted. Then, just coming back, I think it was Laporte who heads it back to Ederson, who was coming out. So the ball is going almost into the goal where Nathan Ake 
is just saving it off the line. Ball comes to Martinelli who puts it onto the post. That could have turned the game the Arsenal's way and then it's go the other way because from that action then uh, Gabriel has to bring down Ster Sterling in the middle of, of the park. Not, not sure if it was absolutely necessary but if you are in a yellow you probably should let that go and it's sent off. And so within five minutes that game completely turns City City's way although they didn't have to, too many chances and Arsenal fought valiantly and really I think with everything kind of going against them Although mostly the, it was, they were the makers of their own demise, which is really hard because I watched the game and I felt this is so unfair, this is so unfair because I wanted Arsenal to win. This, this, this one, yeah, I'm aware I'm saying this uh, <laughs> wearing a Spurs shirt, but I really want it because I want the race to be exciting. But the more you watch it, the more I thought, yeah, I actually Arsenal did it themselves. They have no one else to blame but themselves in many ways because you made stupid decisions. And then in the last minute, uh, Rotary scores the uh, winner and it was very dejecting in many, many ways. Um, I then watched Watford against Spurs. Horrible game. Horrible game. I know in the end Spurs got the winner. I thought it will always, always be a winner come coming. Then when it wasn't in the 80s, I thought, okay, I joined my family for dinner. And then I hear the TV, yeah, goal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was deserved, but you know, Spurs are keeping it up and if they keep getting results, it doesn't look always pretty and I think they definitely look better and if there's a, where they don't have the ball a lot. So that's why I think the upcoming North London Derby will be really, really interesting. Um, yeah, it was... I cannot say much more uh, than that. I have to say that the West Ham Crystal Palace game did not see that one, but the one when I watched it, it was a really weird one because Crystal Palace was not as bad as the halftime score of 3-0 for West Ham uh, said. I mean, it should have been probably level. Lanzini scoring an absolute brilliant goal and it was not even it was not even the, uh, the best goal, maybe not even the second best goal of the um, new year. 3-0 uh, lead, Chris Pass late, pulled it back to a more palatable score and that was a bit more reflective of the strengths. But yeah, weird game in many ways. Um, Leeds a huge win. I need to burn that. This was kind of uh, one. Leeds needed to win that one to kind of feel a bit safe. Burnley though, hmm, with that many makeup games. Yes, they look all right because they have many game games in, but this will come quick and fast. And I'm not sure if Burnley has the depth in, in, in the squad to manage that. So I actually would think that Burnley are uh, looking to be really, really in trouble. As we'll see, I, I will pull up the table la later on. It is, um, you know, 40, three out of four teams will go down, one of which is most likely Norwich in many ways. The big one was, of course, Chelsea-Liverpool. I already said the result 2-2, exactly what no one wanted. This needed a winner. But this game, while not quality-wise the best one, was the most thrilling game. It was a joy, especially this first half was one of the best I've seen in a long time. And it was actually a weird first half where Chelsea played for most of the time and Liverpool scored. Now, to me, it already took a turn for in kind of the contentious part with the yellow card from Mane where I honestly felt it should have been a red. The way Mane jumps, yes, you jump like that, but do you need to put the elbow to the back? I know he is, he's, he's not looking probably that. That's why I didn't go to VAR, but I honestly think VAR should, 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 should have looked at it. Especially with other uh, situations that went to VAR, they were also against Chelsea. I didn't think this was the right thing. Mane then, of course, scores the first goal after Pulisic misses a... I don't want to say a sitter, but he's alone in front of the goalie after Harvard's really pressed uh, and gained the ball high very, very well. Then a brilliant goal by Salah, where not only the way he scored the goal, but also the way the, his run up to the goal. First, he pulls towards the midfield, uh, pulls out Rüdiger. The ball goes to Alexander-Arnold, who immediately plays it again to Salah. Rüdiger is now isolated. Alonso runs with Salah. Uh, but doesn't know exactly how and then Salah makes a stop that takes out Alonso and Salah puts it into the near corner. Yeah, goal it didn't look well, but pretty, pretty amazing goal. Outdone by Kovacic. Best goal. I mean, technically this is an impossible goal. Uh, he is running backward. He is kind of already falling a little, a little bit back. He's jumping, takes the right a swing at it and it goes into the corner. And that they look at VAR for offside because Rüdiger was standing there was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Chelsea, there was a, like a 10-20 minute period where um, 
the game kind of seemed to a little bit because Liverpool had con control and Chelsea felt ejected. That reignited them and then they deservedly got the equalizer through Pulisic. A really nicely played uh, move uh, and uh, especially always on the edge of offside but Chelsea just, just now and Pulisic buries it 2-2. And we couldn't wait for the second half, but the second half, although good, did not really deliver uh, as much because there were no goals anymore. Liverpool had two chances early on. Later on, I thought that Chelsea was the better team. Uh, probably could have gotten the winner, but yeah. 2-2, two -two, maybe overall. I think it was slightly more Chelsea, but you know, 2-2 two -two is not, uh, a, a draw was not undeserved as well. But it doesn't help any one of them because City now has a 10-point lead. Uh, and then the round ended, of course, with uh, Wolves beating Manchester United deservedly 1-0. As I said, United don't look all that great. So with all that, we have now uh, a very, very uneven table, uh, but we see that uh, City have a 10-point lead over Chelsea, Liverpool uh, 11 over Liverpool. They could cut it down to eight, but you know, it looks really, really all going see this way. Uh, as I said, the battle for the fourth spot is the most interesting part where Arsenal are also favorites at the moment, according to my model, with Spurs and United right, right, right behind West Ham is a team that's a little bit in trouble. Uh, and then, yeah, on the bottom of the, of, of, of the table, uh, Norwich seem to be gone. I don't know about Newcastle. Depends on how much they invest and blah 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 if they can make a turn or not. I don't think that New Newcastle is um, they, At the moment they look bad, but if they get a good investment is they actually probably could turn turn turn, turn around uh, But I have to say that uh, Burnley Although not uh, only at 44 for four, four percent because they have game game hand That's the team where I'm lo looking at I think yeah, they might go down and probably maybe Watford as well Leeds Everton um, Might just escape. So yeah Upcoming round yeah, we have three makeup games, but you know our stats cast will come out where you can see then a little bit more We have a North London Derby actually coming mid-January and together with City Chelsea where Chelsea definitely needs to win that one if they want to have any chance of a uh, shot at the title in any case, I would like to know what you thought about the happenings in the mid mid -mid Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell. So in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.